Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlantic British. In this video, we're going to touch base on a very common problem that shows up in the LR3s and the uh, uh, sports, both the supercharged and the non-supercharged. Essentially what happens is you're going to get a little warning on your instrument cluster. It's going to say low coolant level. And you're going to go out and you're going to look at the bottle and you're going to have plenty of coolant. You don't understand why it's giving you that message. Uh, in many cases, it's not so much the sensor on the bottom, but there is a small float that runs at the bottom of those tanks that over a period of time become saturated and they just simply drops to the bottom of the tank so it will always register as if the tank is empty so you'll always get that message the only cure is to really to replace the overflow bottle so what we're going to do is we're going to show you the part which you're going to need to replace and how to install it so let's start with the tank now this is a little bit revised this is the original equipment but it, they've made some minor changes since the original so just something you want to notice as far as like the bleeder screw being at an angle as opposed to straight up the tank being a little thinner in this area than it is on the original but you'll see all your mounting and all your hose connections are all in the same place so it's basically it is the same tank now the part number on this if you want to look it up in our website is LR020367 G. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to install this without making a big mess and that you don't have to drain your entire cooling system to put it in. Alright so initially what we're going to do we'll start with just simply removing the power steering fluid uh, reservoir and that's just get your hand up underneath give it a lift up and we'll just move that out of the way a little bit. Now this is a supercharged model so we have a little extra plumbing on there so we're just going to set that to the side and then your fill tube for your windshield washer fluid same thing, just pull to the side a little bit. We want to release those tabs. We're going to pull that out of the way. So that essentially just gets that out. Now, I usually recommend you're going to do this when the engine's cold so you don't have pressure built up in the tank. Should you have run it shortly, you're going to have a little bit of pressure. You just back the cap off about a half a turn, listen for a hiss. No hiss, no pressure. And you just take your cap off. Because we're going to reuse this with the new tank. The tank doesn't come with a cap. Now, the only two hoses we need to disconnect is the main feed hose down at the bottom and your vent hose up top. Now you can see this is a rather short hose. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen that clamp and work the hose off about halfway. That'll give us some more hose to clamp onto. What we're going to do is simply just clamp it off so that it doesn't leak out. So really the only coolant we're essentially going to lose is what's in the tank itself. And just a general pair of pliers. We'll squeeze, move that out. You usually find it's best work the hose side to side until you actually see movement on the end of the hose. Many times it'll it'll grab, it'll stick, it's been there for a while. And once you get it worked loose, we're gonna back that off. And the end of the the end of this nipple that it slides onto is still about a half inch away, so we're gonna come out just a little bit more. We're gonna stop at this point. And here's where we use our little vice grip needle nose, and we're going to simply pinch that off. And you're going to get some cooling out of this. You may want to put a catch bucket underneath the vehicle, because you're still going to drip a little bit no matter what. But at least doing it this way, you don't have to drain the entire system. So, we got that off, and we're going to move that out of the way as well. And we're getting a little dripping, but not bad. Now, you also have to hold this down. There are two bolts down on the top of the fender well, eight millimeter heads. Probably the best way to reach them is with a quarter inch drive, a swivel head socket, and a long tail, a long handled ratchet so you have a little leverage. These have a tendency to get stuck in there a little bit. You'll notice that the bracket that holds this motor right here sits on top. We'll be able to move that back a little bit and slide that out from underneath. So now we get to the difficult part and only because with the additional plumbing we have one large hose at the bottom of this tank that needs to be unclamped and removed. It's going to be hard to get a tool down in there but it can be done. So essentially what we need to do first on this side of the tank and we'll show you on the new one so you can get an idea. There's a large rubber bumper right there that this opening slides into and at the very bottom there's a rubber uh, cushion that has a hole in the center that this bottom peg runs into so essentially this whole side of the bottle is 
basically can be pulled up and removed, which is what we're going to do here. So first thing we do, we get our hand underneath because we're going to lift straight up and out. And we're over the top of the bracket. Now the, the situation is what happens, you have the hose. And I don't know if you can see that, but straight down at the very bottom is your large hose and clamp. Now to try to get in there with a pair of pliers and whatnot, it can be done. It's a little difficult, it's a little nerve wracking, but I'm going to show you a tool that will make it a lot easier. And this tool was actually designed for these hard to reach clamps and you'll find this in a lot of automotive centers. Essentially what it does is it's a cable driven attachment so that you put both tabs of the clamp on that and as you squeeze the handle it brings them together compressing the the uh, clamp. So we're going to manage to run that down and hook up to one side of the clamp and then hold the attachment down level so that as we squeeze the other side makes contact and this has a, uh, a stop on it so when you fully squeeze it it'll lock which will hold that clamp open so now we can just get down in there and sort of work it off the edge of the nipple of the body and down the clamp a little bit basically get the end of that hose exposed so that we can put a clamp. Now if you follow that large hose, it's actually exposed right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another pair of squeeze pliers and I'll show you these pliers. They're made specifically for pinching off hoses and then this way we aren't going to drain gallons of coolant all over the ground. All right, these are the pliers I had mentioned. You'll see in your notes they have smooth jaw and they pivot so that they get a nice square feel and attachment. They'll always be square to the hose. And what it has is a squeeze type ratchet where you simply squeeze to lock and pull the handles to unlock. So very easy to use. So here we have room where we can drop this down far enough to get around that lower hose and then just squeeze it off. That will keep us from leave, basically emptying everything in the top of the engine. So now we can get our hose off and remove our tank. Alright, so we did manage, we got the hose off. It is tight. You can work it back and forth and finally get it off. When, once you remove it, it's going to start dumping a little bit of coolant so you can get down, you put your hand down alone and just basically cap off the end with your finger. We're going to pull it up to about this position and then the last thing we have left is the wire connection for the sensor itself. Essentially that's going to be right here on the other side of the tank and you'll see that little metal wire across there. You're going to depress that wire and that's going to release the connector from the sensor. So, as you can see, we lost a little coolant. As I said, it would be best to have put a bucket underneath. But instead of having to drain the entire system, you've got the two hoses that feed the tank. And you can see that the condition of the tank, where the area where the float would be, is pretty heavily built up with material. And what that's doing is holding that float down at the bottom so that you're always going to get low coolant reading. So we'll set that aside. And assembly, just reverse the assembly, putting this back together. Obviously first thing we do is put this back in in this position. Now that sensor you can spin that on the bottom of the tank so you can point that in a downward direction to be able to get the connector back on. And then essentially you're going to line it up and then slide it up so that it gives you a distinct click so you know you're connected. So next we're going to try to we're going to snake this down a bit and get this close to its mounting position so that we can slide the hose back on. Now we've left that clamp tool on for a reason is because trying to get back on that clamp with the hose down in place is almost impossible. So with it still on there it's going to make our installation a lot easier. And 
And remember that the power steering hoses go over the top of the coolant hose. You want to remember your routing so that you're not causing any undue stress on any of those hoses. Right, so we've been able to slide the hose back on the bottom of the bottle and we've been able to work the clamp back over to its original position. I'd like to be able to show you that, but it's in such a tight area that I can't get my hands on the camera in the same area to show you. But um, it's in general the idea of but simply putting the hose on an attachment and, and getting the clamp on. It's just it's a little tight, takes a little patience, but you will get it on. Fortunately now with this tool, we have the clamp in place. And we don't have to try to get in there where this is held the clamp open so trying to do that and squeeze that clamp open would have been is almost impossible but here you just hit that release lever let go of the handle and the attachment expands the clamp so that it's back to where it originally started great tool great time saver so now the uh, rubber bumper i was talking about can actually be seen just underneath the hood latch so that you can align that opening and have that slide in. You'll need to hold this up straight so that that pin on the bottom works its way down into that button so that we have a, a secure fit and then we're going to slide the one inner bolt hole underneath that bracket where it was originally. So we have a good firm connection. So now we're just going to reinstall those two bolts. Alright, so very last step. We put the two bolts in. We're latched on the button here and we've got the post down in the bottom where it belongs. we got a nice firm connection. Next is we reinstall the hose. As I say, we'll just get that started off our clamping plier and then push it on the rest of the way. Now all we need to do is just squeeze and reinstall. Okay, now we got that done. We reach down, we spread the handles on our other tool. So now both hoses are on and clamped. Put our power steering fluid ho reservoir back on and our washer fluid fill tube. Okay, so now at this point we're gonna fill the bottle, we're gonna back this bleeder off about two turns, go have a cup of coffee, enjoy, take about 10-15 minutes, let the system bleed and fill back up. You'll even notice that as soon as you release the bottom hose you're actually already starting to fill from the bottom. So it probably won't take much more than a quart, maybe a quart and a half fluid to top this off and no longer have to watch that warning on your dashboard. So when you're ready to turn off that low coolant reservoir light, just give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. And thanks for watching.